So for solving this integral, I'm looking at um, the integral of x cubed all over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And looking at this, my brain immediately went to trig sub, but then I also saw a solution for using u sub. So I want to show the two different ways to approach this problem, that neither are incorrect. One is more efficient than the other, but um, do you beat yourself up for not you choosing the efficient method? No, just learn from it like I did. I want to tell why I immediately went trig sub, though, um, as my method of choice. When I see, oops, this is supposed to be a plus, actually. So this, it's a square root of 1 plus x squared in there. So when I see that square root of 1 plus x squared, the x squared and the square root immediately have me thinking trig sub because we use those trig identities to kind of get rid of that plus sign is what they were using being used for. So I look at that and say, you know, I remember I have a trig identity of 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. So it takes two terms and makes it into one term. So I thought, you know what, let's let x equal tan theta. That means dx is going to be equal to secant squared theta d theta. And so I make all those substitutions. And so let me label this as method one. So just the first method I tried. So when I make those substitutions, it becomes the integral of tan cubed theta all over the square root of one plus tan squared theta. And then my dx became secant squared theta d theta. And one plus tan theta, this would actually be this. So I'm going to do a little scratch work over here. The square root of 1 plus tan squared theta would be equal to the square root of secant squared theta, and the square root of that would thus be secant theta. So now my integral can be written as tan cubed theta times secant squared theta all over secant theta, d theta. And one of those thetas divides into the secant squared theta, so I'm left with just a single secant theta in the numerator. And my integral becomes tan cubed theta, secant theta, d theta. Now, when I was looking at solving this trig integral, because that's what it is now is a trig integral, I was thinking, all right, we need to do a u substitution, but I'm going to be taking the derivatives of things. So um, I was remembering what the derivatives were of certain things. So um, derivative of tan x is actually equal to secant squared x, and the derivative of secant x is actually equal to secant x tan x. Now, when I originally played around with this, I thought, okay, let's get something with um, a secant squared x, and let's see where we can go from that. So that tan cubed x, I can separate out into tan squared x times tan or theta times tan theta, and then I still have that secant theta d theta, all in the integral. And the tan squared theta, using the same identity I did in the beginning, but just moving some stuff around, I get secant squared theta minus 1. And again, that's from the very beginning. If 1 plus tan squared theta equals secant theta, if I just subtract 1 to each side, I can make a secant squared theta minus 1 as a substitute for tan squared theta. And then I have still the tan theta times secant theta sitting on the outside of that um, secant squared minus 1. Now here, I look at this and say, all right, well, if I let u be tan theta here, if I let that happen, then I have a secant squared theta that's going to pop up. But that secant squared theta I'm looking at right now is locked in those parentheses, and it's not going to be very helpful with my substitution. If I let u be secant theta, then I'm going to be left with a, I need a, a secant tan theta. They're going to come out. And I say, okay, that actually um, would work quite well because I do have a secant and a tan theta here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let u equal uh, secant theta. Then that means du is secant theta tan theta d theta. And I can make all those substitutions now. So I have the integral of u squared minus 1, that quantity, times du. 
and then I can go ahead and, and solve for this. So I get u cubed over 3 minus u, and then of course this plus c hanging out. And now I have to go back and make my substitution. So I get secant cubed theta over 3 minus secant theta, and all this plus c. But that secant theta, I'm not done yet, because my original substitution in the beginning was x equals tan theta. So x equals tan theta implies that theta equals the inverse tangent of x over 1. And that's because you can picture this x as over 1, and we have the inverse tangent to undo uh, what's happening to the theta, and so we get the inverse tangent of x over 1. If we utilize our right triangle trigonometry here, and we let theta be in the bottom uh, uh, bottom angle, bottom left angle, and our right angle is on the bottom right, then I have that the inverse tangent here, x over 1 opposite over adjacent. My hypotenuse would thus be square root of 1 plus x squared using Pythagorean theorem because 1 squared plus x squared equals c squared, and then I solved for c. And so I look at that theta and that triangle and I say, okay, what's the secant of that? So cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so secant would be hypotenuse over adjacent. So my secant cube theta becomes this quantity of square root of 1 plus x squared, all of that to the third power, because that's my hypotenuse over adjacent, so I don't need to worry about the 1, and that's all divided by 3, and that'll be minus the square root of um, 1 plus x squared, and then that's plus c. But a little simplifying we can do here is to recognize that if we take the square root of anything and cube it, so let's say square root of a cubed, that's equal to square root of a times square root of a times square root of a, which would be equal to a square root of a. So we would get on the outside of this 1 plus x squared times the square root of 1 plus x squared all over 3 minus and uh, if we want to make this all over one uh, uh, division bar, then I could multiply 3 times 3, 3 over 3. And I'm doing this because a lot of book answers will show it this way. So what I had up here before I started messing with it is sufficient, but we're going to go ahead and simplify. So I get 3 square root of 1 plus, square, uh, 1 plus x squared all over 3 plus c. So these are all can be written over one single fraction bar now. <clears throat> so we get 1 plus x squared times the quantity of 1 plus square root of 1 plus x squared minus 3 times the square root of 1 plus x squared all over 3 plus e. And then we can factor out this 1 plus x squared, that square root of 1 plus x squared, and I'm left with 1 plus x squared minus 3, all over 3, plus c. And so the inside of the parentheses, if I simplify that, so the whole thing becomes square root of 1 plus x squared times the quantity x squared minus 2. So if you saw this in a solution manual, you're saying, where'd that minus 2 come in? That's where it came from. And that's all plus c, and then I get my final answer. Now I'm going to keep going on this because I finished it, I got the answer, it's great, but if we take a gander back at all of the work, quite a bit went into it when I looked at it as a trig substitution. That's why when we do the next method of solving the same problem, uh, whether it's easier or more difficult, uh, it, it's up to you. But that's So the trig sub worked, but I did have to uh, mind my P's and Q's a bit there.